Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Glad that you're here. A few announcements for us today is that we continue to have the Lent soup suppers and the service. The supper begins at 5.30 p.m. and service at 6.15. Thanks to all of those who are willing to help provide meals, and we still are looking for some of those to be filled. And there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer if you're able to do that. On Monday, March 11th, there is quilting at 9 a.m. And coming up, March 17th, is the Heifer International Annual Super Soup Super Soup <laughs> Cook-Off Fundraiser, and that will be held here at 5 p.m. So we look forward to um, hosting that this year. Those are your announcements that I have. Do we are there any other announcements? Let us pause for a moment of silence as we prepare to worship our Lord. Now as God has greeted us, let us greet one another. Who knows? 
a donation that year might have bought an axe, a helmet, or a pair of rubber boots. Or maybe they just purchased items during Fire Prevention Week and took them to the elementary classes. My sons still remember when the firefighters came in, brought in those little red hats, and they got to talk about fire prevention. The March 2024 20, noisy offering will be used wisely for needed items. You can count on that. The noisy offering will be collected this morning and through the entire month of, month of March. The collection can will be found in the foyer if you would like to contribute a little more. Thank you in advance for helping out the community. And be sure to take a, pick, a look at the can. I've got lots of firefighting things on it. So, we'd like to take out the noisy offering if you've got any spare change, whatever. We'll dump it in and make loud noise this morning. And uh, thanks to Kim Swank for helping collect. <laughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left done them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Six days a week are set apart for your daily duties 
and regular work. But the seventh day is the day of rest, dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any kind of work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. Then he rested on the seventh day. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God will give you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not testify falsely against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servant, ox or donkey, or anything else your neighbor owns. The word of God, words of life. Be the responsive reading is from Psalm 19, 1 through 14. The heavens tell of the glory of God. The skies display his marvelous craftsmanship. The air of the day continues to speak, night after night they make no They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is silent in the skies. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. The air more desirable than gold, even the soul. They are sweeter than honey, even than honey dripping from the They are a warning to those who hear them. There is a great reward for those who obey him. Keep me from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. The word of the cross is pure foolishness and nonsense to the world because it claims that God is mostly revealed in weakness, humiliation, and death. But through such foolishness and weakness, God is working to save us. The center of Paul's preaching is Christ crucified. The reading from 1 Corinthians, beginning with verse 18. I know very well how foolish the message of the cross sounds to those who are on the road to destruction. But we who are being saved recognize this message as the very power of God. As the scriptures say, I will destroy human wisdom and discard the most brilliant ideas. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars, and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made them all look foolish and has shown their wisdom to be useless nonsense. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never find him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save all who believe. God's way seems foolish to the Jews because they want a sign from heaven to prove it is true. And it is foolish to the Greeks because they believe only what agrees with their own wisdom. So when we preach that God, that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those who are called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the mighty power of God and the wonderful wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is far wiser than the wisest of human plans. 
and God's weakness is far stronger than the greatest of human strength. The Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God.
His son's eye was trained with sharp business, a good mind, that caused the father to beam with pride as he dealt with these art collections all around the world. As winter approached, war engulfed the nation, and the young man left to serve his country. After a few short weeks, his father received a telegram. His beloved son was missing in action. The art collector anxiously waited for news, fearing that he would never see his son again. Within days, his fears were confirmed. The young man had died. He died while rushing a fellow soldier to a medic. Distraught and lonely, the old man faced the upcoming Christmas with anguish and sadness. The joy of this season, a season that he and his son looked forward to, would no longer belong in his house. And there came Christmas morning and knocking on the door as he opened it to this old depressed man. He saw as he walked down the halls, all of the masterpieces that only reminded him that his son was not coming home. And as he opened the store, he was greeted by a soldier with a large package in his hand. He had introduced himself to the man saying, I was a friend of your son. He was the one that rescued me while he died. May I come in for a few moments? I have something to show you. As the two began to talk, the soldier told of how this man's son touched so many lives as he met them, and also shared the stories of his love for fine art along with his father. And this soldier said, I'm an artist. I want to give you this. And as the old man unwrapped the package, as the paper gave way, he saw a portrait of his son. Though the world would never consider it a genius of fine art, the painting featured this man's son in striking detail. And overcome with emotion, the man thanked the soldier and promised to hang it above the fireplace. And just a few hours later, after the soldier had departed, the old man was set to the task. True to his word, the painting went above the fireplace, pushing aside thousands and thousands of dollars of paintings. And then the man sat in a chair and spent his Christmas gazing up at that picture, this gift that was given to him. During the days and weeks that followed, the man realized that even though his son was no longer with him, the boy's life would live on because of all of the lives that he had touched. The painting of this son soon became his most prized possession, far eclipsing any interest of any piece in any museum across the world. He told his neighbor of this greatest gift that he had ever received. The following spring, this old man became ill and passed away. The art world was in anticipation. With this collector's passing, they knew that his son had also died, and so these paintings would be brought up in auction. And according to the will of the old man, the day would soon arrive where all of the art collectors from across the world would gather together to bid on the most world spectacular paintings. Dreams would be fulfilled this day. Greatness would be achieved by these collectors being able to claim that they have the greatest collection. The auction began with a painting that was not on the museum's list. It was a painting of this man's son. The auctioneer opened up the bidding. The room was silent. Who will bid $100, he asked. 
Minutes passed and no one spoke. And then a sound came from the back. Who cares about this painting? It's just a picture of the old man's son. Let's go and get to the good stuff. And more voices echoed. But the auctioneer said, no, we have to sell this one first. Now, who will take the son? Finally, the neighbor, the friend of the old man in the back said, I have $10 for the painting. That's all I have. I knew the boy, and I'll take it. Will anyone go higher than $10? More silence. Going once, going twice, gone. And the gavel fell. Cheers filled the room, and someone exclaimed, now we can get on with the bidding. We can now get to the treasures we all anticipated. The auctioneer looked at the audience and announced, the auction is over. Stunned with disbelief, there was quiet in the room. Someone spoke up and asked, what do you mean it's over? We didn't come here for a picture of an old guy's son. What about all of these paintings? There are millions and millions of dollars in here. I demand to have an explanation of what's going on. The auctioneer replied, it's very simple. According to the will of the father, whoever takes the son gets it all. There is a difference between the world's point of view her way to live, and God's. The world tells us to have expensive paintings to make our lives whole, to make us happy. The world tells us that possessions or having power over someone are to make life worth living. Jesus becomes angry because he knows what it means to have a whole life. In fact, he is the one. In Matthew chapter 6, it says, Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. We invest so much of life into what the world defines as important. We expect that these things will make us whole and fill our cup. And Jesus comes and brings us a new kingdom that radiates a reality of wholeness. It is certainly not only the world's most famous paintings. And during the season of Lent, we spend time reflecting on what it is that tests us, that tempts us. What of your tables are being overturned? What lies sneak into your soul to make you feel like you need wholeness other than Christ's? The wisdom of God is shown in Jesus. And the wisdom shown in Jesus sounds like foolishness to the world. Life is nothing like what our world calls us into. Because Jesus' life was about death, dying to the self and rising in Christ. Who would want this kind of life anyway? No worldly wisdom would ask this of someone, or even justify a life like that. God is calling us to live outside of the wisdom of the world, and calls us to live the wisdom of God which is the true source of life. Unlike the story of this painting, you are given Jesus. And like the story of the painting, you are given it all. The sun. And in that gift, you get everything. Not fancy paintings, but a life of forgiveness, love, and wholeness. For the word of God has come to you in flesh and lives in you. 
The king has come to bring you wholeness. A new temple, not built with human hands, but in the one Son, in the body of Christ. And that is the good news. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. 
You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to the mystery of your presence and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. Hear us, O God. You renew creation. Drive out those who would make the earth a marketplace. Protect rainforests, mountaintops, oceans, and wilderness areas from commercial exploitation. Unite nations, policymakers, and business in effort to reduce carbon emissions. Hear us, O oh God. You judge the nations. We pray for an end to war and strife in every land. Strengthen international efforts to negotiate a peace and provide humanitarian aid to people fleeing from conflict. Hear us, O oh God. You bring healing and hope. We give thanks for physicians, nurses, researchers, therapists, and public health workers who prevent and treat illness. We pray for any who are now sick, especially Kathy, Pat and Howard, Don, Terry, Jane, Celia, Mary Jo, and those we now speak about or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You abide with your people. Sustain any in this community undergoing life transitions, marriage, divorce, childbirth, adoption, moving, graduation, employment change, those preparing for baptism, or a death in the family, especially be with Marlene, Heidi, Elizabeth, and Todd Basham. Hear us, O oh God. You bring life from death. We remember our loved ones who have died, confident that they have a new life in you. May we trust that nothing can separate us from your love. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our journey. God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. We see it as we see the Lift 
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.